It is here, the 2023 season kicking off Thursday, and so we've got to make our picks and our six-pack of favorites from Sunday. And we're going to start with Thursday Nighter, Kansas City, and the Detroit Lions, and then our favorite six games from week one. Coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks everybody for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Appreciate all of the everydayers out there who are subscribed on YouTube and everywhere you get your podcasts. And uh, before we get to our weekly six pack and the Thursday nighter to kick off the 2023 season, today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Well, to, to start the season, we've got some, some cloudy rosters <laughs> around the NFL and none more so than the Kansas City Chiefs, Matt. Uh, and there's been big questions all off season about who is outside of Travis Kelsey, who is Patrick Mahomes going to be throwing to in this offense. And now you're maybe taking Travis Kelsey out of it, who had a hyper extended knee. It is not an ACL injury. So they're out of the woods there, but a big question mark with Travis Kelsey, if he's going to be on the field for Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. And, oh, yeah, their best player on the defensive side of the ball <laughs> still holding out in Chris Jones. So it looks at this point unlikely, and we're recording this uh, on Wednesday. So um, maybe things change early and the Chiefs get really good news on Thursday, but seems very doubtful at this point that Travis Kelsey or Chris Jones is going to be on the field in any meaningful capacity for the Kansas City Chiefs when they kick off the season against the Lions. Yeah, well, happy opening day, opening night to all. The season has arrived. I am psyched. I'm tired of, you know, prognosticating of what these teams are going to do when we get the actual react to real football that matters. That is awesome. And, yeah, uh, it sure looks unlikely that they're going to have their second and third most important player. But that leads me to their first important player. So can he wear the cape? Is there still the S on the chest that it doesn't matter? Will they run the ball more? They, they still have a good line. And if you protect that guy, does it even matter who he's throwing to? To some degree. I think the Chiefs win this game. And I know the line keeps dropping. I just think that this is asking a lot from an upstart Lions team. You know, I mean, the environment. I almost always, always, always pick against the road team in this game. I just think it's an awful scheduling quirk that you're a good team and you have to play the Super Bowl champ and they're building when they're hanging banners and rings and hoopla, let alone in that building against that quarterback and that coach that when you give Reed an extended stretch to prepare for a team, he is just superb. And frankly, I don't know if Jared Goff has it in him. <laughs> it might be just that simple. Yeah. Their guy has an S on his chest and your guy doesn't. Um, and so that being said, there's a reason why the Kansas city chiefs and you laid it out were pretty big favorites coming into week mm -hmm. one for this game. But that line has started to move now because there's no Jones and because there's no Kelsey and look, this is the NFL where there's 22 guys on the field. Can Patrick Mahomes make up for that? And like, he still has a good offensive line. There are still some players that he's going to be able to get the ball to, and he will in this game, but maybe the chiefs, maybe this is the team you do want to face in week one to, to start the season all the hoopla aside. So now with the line, uh, courtesy of our friends at FanDuel, four and a half now the Kansas City Chiefs are favored, and that has come down from near a touchdown favorites for Kansas City. How do you feel about that now with the new four and a half point line, or does it make you want to bet Kansas City more against those lines, man? 
I think it wants me to makes me want to bet Kansas City more. And that again, that's just such a buzzsaw. And I'm not picking on Goff, but we know his home road splits are not very favorable. These type of games have not been his forte. And if I'm them, I mean, frankly, besides the Eagles, these might be the two best offensive lines in the league. You know, like can both these offenses control the line of scrimmage? One team short on playmakers, the other one doesn't have a quarterback with an S on his, you know, on his chest. That's going to be a huge key to me. But I'm still not sold on the Lions' defense. I mean, whether it's run defense or just handling the homes, I think it's better than last year. But I don't think it's maybe even average, to be honest with you. If you could choose only one of Jones or Kelsey to play in this game for the Chiefs, which one would you choose? Because the way I look at this is. If you believe Mahomes is going to find a way against that Lions defense, and, and I think we'll learn a lot about the Lions defense and what it might start to look like this year, um, especially if there's no Kelsey, if they can corral the rest of the guys in, in Patrick Mahomes, that'll be huge for them. And you know they're going to try to take the ball out of Jared Goff's hands. For the most part, early, things are going to come out quick. A lot of um, running the football, and with no Chris Jones inside, is that enough for the for the, the uh, Detroit Lions to keep this thing close and at least keep this thing within a, a field goal and within that four and a half point line because we know Dan Campbell's team's going to come out with some physicality and I have a feeling it's not going to be like, okay, let's start chucking it deep with Jared Goff from snap one of the season. Yeah, I do think that the Lions will run the ball well and I'm really excited to see how Gibbs is employed. I don't think he's going to be a bell cow back pounding them behind Penny Sewell. I mean, I definitely don't think that's the case probably pepper St. Brown with a lot of targets. And I don't know if they'll have a great answer for him either, but I think I'd rather have Kelsey if I'm the chiefs and just say first one to 35 wins. You well, know what I mean? Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. Run the ball every time. Cause you're going to put up threes. We'll put up sevens. Mm-hmm. Right. And in our building, we have some advantages and we're going to trust our coach and quarterback. So if I had to pick the two, if I'm Andy Reid, I think I'd rather have Kelsey, which sounds like a much better chance of actually happening than Jones. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so hopefully for the Kansas City Chiefs, they do get those guys back and we get to see what that team looks mm -hmm. like. But, you know, maybe a team you do want to see early in the season rather than late in the season in Kansas City. We'll see if the Detroit Lions can take advantage there. So straight up and against the spread, you're giving up four and a half points and taking the Kansas City Chiefs, Matt. I am. How about you? Oh, I I, I kind of I'm with you on this one that the the line moving makes me really want to take Kansas City because I think they can win this football game. But those are really important players, Chris Jones oh, and Travis Kelsey for this football team. Uh, things can be weird. Balls can bounce funny to start the season. So I'm going to take the points and I'm going to take the Detroit Lions. And I'm kind of a believer. And I know a lot of our fans uh, and listeners of the podcast have, have not liked some of the things we said about the Detroit lions and some long-term team building strategies and all that. But man, Jared Goff had a really nice season. He's in, in the most stable point he's ever been in his career. Yes. He's got a whoopee in Amonra St. Brown that Pat Mahomes doesn't have on his side. Uh, they've got an ability to run the football behind a good offensive line and hit you with maybe a, a big time emerging playmaker. In Gibbs, Jameer Gibbs. We'll see what the first round running. They drafted him at 12, and, and we're doing chest bumps in the in the draft room, right? Drafting a top 12 running back. And so they must have some kind of plans, and I don't think we've seen what that looks like yet. So catch and run opportunities. Can they put points up on this team and run the football and play their brand without Chris Jones? I think they can. So as crazy as that sounds, give me the Detroit Lions. Give me some points against okay. the defending champ, Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs will never see it this way, Reed and Mahomes, but they do have some built-in excuses to not blow the doors off their opponent in week one. And it wouldn't be the first time we saw a really good team kind of start a little slow to start the mm -hmm. season. It's mm -hmm. just some, some a little cloud hanging over. And speaking of a cloud of a holdout hanging over a football team, what about those San Francisco yeah. 49ers, Matt? My team against your team, the San Francisco 49ers at the Steelers, part of our Sunday six-pack. We've got some good division matchups as well. Packers and Bears. How does that new rivalry look with Chicago and Green Bay? All coming up next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Prize picks, 
Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy and made fun. Prize Picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money uh, the, uh, in this upcoming football season. You can do it. I haven't won any money yet in this football season because the football season hasn't quite started yet. But all you do, this is how easy it is at Prize Picks. All you do is you select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. And if you get if you hit them all, then you win. And the more you play, the more you win. So, for example, in uh, in Thursday night's game, Jared Goff, how about this one? 0. 0.5 interceptions. Oh, does he throw a pick mm. or not? Basically, is the question here. And uh, if he does, then boom. Uh, you are a winner. Two or more players is all you do. And you pick five players and you hit all those, then you win up to 25 times your money. Price Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday each Tuesday, obviously. <laughs> uh, picks, uh, Price Picks discounts, select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that is prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use code locked on NFL for that first deposit match up to $100. How does, uh, this is another one that I think, I think it swings it quite a bit. And, and in fact, if you're building, say, a, if you were building a uh, sort of a list, Matt, of top five defensive players that singularly impact their team more than any others in the NFL, I think Chris Jones would be on that list. I think Nick Bosa and TJ Watt would be on this list. And only one of those three players might be on the field in week one for their respective team. And uh, it doesn't look like Nick Bosa is going to be signing in time. And at this point, even if Chris Jones or Nick Bosa do sign, they will probably be limited in some fashion in these football games. And I think that absolutely changes the line here for me as the 49ers take on the Steelers in Pittsburgh in week one. Yeah, you mentioned Watt. And unfortunately, the Steelers had to suffer through that last year, you know, a, a large stretch of the season without their stud. And the numbers are astronomically different with him without him on the field even when he came back and he wasn't even 100 percent i think jones and bosa are similar but i also think there's a little bit more around those guys in terms of offensive firepower that you can overcome it of course mahomes and a great san fran offense so of course we gotta spend a little time with our teams here i mean some things that i really am paying attention to is i bet shanahan can't wait to attack the middle of the field like the steelers linebackers last year were the worst unit on the team they shipped them all out brought in a bunch of new guys hopefully it's better but it's still not a strength i mean it's going to be attack the middle of the field without mercy and i do think a wild card in this game is to watch minka minka's not just going to sit in deep middle play in center field he's going to come up and play man coverage on McCaffrey, handle the slot, uh, robber stuff in the middle of the field. And as a Steeler guy, I want Purdy to take shots. I want him to hold the ball, to attack down the sidelines, not attack the middle of the field. And so if I can, if I give up a big play by doing so, so be it. I'm a little worried from a Niners perspective on protection, you know, because I think Trent Williams washes out Highsmith, who's a good player. But those other four versus Hayward and Watt, et cetera, would worry me from a, a Niners perspective. But I do think Shanahan will manipulate those linebackers in the middle of the field expertly. And clearly we've both spent a lot of time on this football game mm -hmm. to cover both of these teams. Um, you, you nailed it. You hit one word that I think is going to be huge in this one. And when Crocker and I were breaking down this football game on Locked On 49ers, we talked about, is it Brock Purdy versus Minka Fitzpatrick or is it Kyle Shanahan versus Minka Fitzpatrick? And I think it's Coach. The robber. The robber. And mm -hmm. uh, the robber has gotten Jimmy Garoppolo numerous times. It's gotten other quarterbacks in Kyle Shanahan's offense. And it was a sort of an interception that we called the Jimmy G interception, where he thinks he sees one thing pre-snap, expects to go somewhere. The play is designed to go somewhere. He turns his back, play action, snaps it off, 
guess what? There's a linebacker or a safety, robber safety that jumped down into this spot in the middle of the field, jumped in front of the dig, you know, jumped in front of the slant that they thought was going to be there. And it, and in my opinion, it's as much the Kyle Shanahan interception as it is the Jimmy Garoppolo interception. Okay. So I think that's a big one. And if you, at the end of the game, you look at Mika Fitzpatrick's numbers, and if he's getting his hands on footballs, intercepting them or tipping them up to teammates, then uh, that spells doom, I think, for the San Francisco 49ers in this one. But you're right. If, if the 49ers are going to come at the Pittsburgh Steelers with the running game and over the middle of the field and try to take advantage of those linebackers. And so uh, we see this very much the same way when the 49ers have the ball on offense. I don't think they are going to try to drop back, hang out in the pocket a long time and give TJ Watt that amount of time to get around Colton McKivitz, who's entering his first year as the starting right tackle for the 49ers. Um, There might be a lot of George Kittle helping out Colton McKivitz in some of those plays. So that takes one less player over the middle of the field. So to me, it's Christian McCaffrey and Debo. This is a CMC Debo game for the 49ers. Get the ball out quick, screen passes, slants over the middle, catch and run opportunities, get the ball out of Purdy's hands, get in rhythm. That's what the 49ers will try to do. Can they do it on the Steelers is a question. Yeah, a, a telling stat will be average time to throw from Purdy when the game's over. If it's 2-8, 2-9, I don't think it goes well for the Niners. What are your thoughts on the other side of the ball? I mean, like, the Steelers have been like the worst team in the league in attacking the middle of the field, but that's all they've been working on. But that's the wrong opponent for that. You know, like, <laughs> stay. I want to attack the perimeters, you know, with, with Pickens and Deontay and those guys. I, I I don't just based on what I saw in the preseason and most likely not having Nick Bosa out there because Bosa, we all know about the, the pass rush oh. ability. He's a really good run defender as well. And the, the run fits were weird in the preseason. And I don't know if it was a Steve Wilkes thing. I don't know if it was just that, you know, in the, the 49ers ones weren't out there a lot in the preseason, which by the way, I think that's an underrated aspect of all these football games. Go Me look too. at how much the ones played in the preseason versus other teams. The Steelers played their starting unit a lot a more than the 49ers. They're at home. They just might be a lot more ready to play than the 49ers are coming into this football game. Um, and, and I that, kind of think that, they are. And I'm I trying think to be unbiased, huge. but yeah. When you're talking about the line and, and where you're putting your money down on a game like this, I, I think that's massive. Um, so the Steelers are going to try to run it. We know that. Mm-hmm. Will the 49ers allow that? Did they get him in third down? Uh, third, you know, third and long situations. And then I think at that point you might see more blitzes than usual. The 49ers want to get home with four without Bosa. If they're not able to do that, they're going to start throwing some blitzes at you. So it, are the, the Steelers able to find some openings on the back end? I would expect if the Steelers win this game, they hit a big play over the top to, yeah. uh, Probably to Pickens, George Pickens, yeah. right? Yeah. And so that would be sort of, it's kind of the opposite. The 49ers are going to win this game over the middle of the field. I think very likely the Steelers will win this game by some big plays over the top of the 49ers defense. And if they are able to run the ball on top of that, then that spells doom for the 49ers because I don't think the 49ers are going to come out and just outscore the Steelers. They're too good on defense. And um, again, I think the Steelers have just prepared themselves more for a week one game than the 49ers have at this point. Me too, especially with the Bosa situation and, Kittle's not 100%, and it's going to be a raucous environment. And say what you want about Purdy. He hasn't been in those buildings as much as other quarterbacks. That's, you know? that's a big question. Like, we still don't know exactly. We expect a certain amount of play, I think, from both Purdy and Pickett. But mm-hmm. those are still really big unknowns. What are, what are these guys in the oh, yeah. like year too? They could kind of enter the stardom phase of their career, you know? And they could both be guys that you're like, oh, maybe we need to replace this guy after that. Mm-hmm. There's almost – uh we there's both like almost, our dude, but we don't know. Yeah, there, there's almost any possibility of those two quarterbacks, mm-hmm. what we think about them uh, a year later. So that's this is going to be a fun game. I can't wait to you know kick off any of these football games, but we're going to learn a lot about some football teams this week. 49ers and Steelers are definitely two of them. 49ers, I think we're going to learn more about the defense without Bosa. Steelers are going to learn more about what those uh, young up-and-comers, year two guys look like on offense. Yeah, yeah. I get the Steelers. I'm a homer, but I think they win this one 23-21. Close game. I just think the momentum's very different for both teams right now. And 
even when the schedule came out, I thought it was great to play the Niners earlier than later. And mm-hmm. I didn't even know the Bosa stuff at the time. Um, but I think he's really a difference maker. And that's a problem. 49ers record with Bosa is, I think, like 37 and 10. Their record without Bosa since he showed up in 2019 is 5 and 10. 5 and 10. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's 37 and 12 and 5 and 10, I believe, when he's in. I even dug this up too. Last year, the snaps he wasn't on the field on passing downs, their pressure rate would have been the worst in the league. When he was out there, it was great. You know, um, it, I would have liked this at three or three and a half where it started more than mm-hmm. like two and a half or two. So I think the money's clearly coming in on the Steelers side as it should be. Um, if you can get it at three all day on the Steelers there, two and a half, I probably still take the Steelers, the home dog, mm-hmm. more prepared. The I don't like your kicker money. situation either, by the way. Oh, yeah, I know we're like, talking kickers. Lining much, up for right. that game-winning field goal. There's your three right. points right there. I don't even know who the kicker is going to be. Their third-round pick is hurt. Um, they got they got your guy. Uh, uh, what is his name? Wright. I don't even know his name. Oh yeah, Matthew Wright. I think Matthew name. Wright. Yeah. So at least he's kicked in that building before, which apparently is not an easy place to kick. It's so he not, might be the yeah. one kicking for the 49ers. So all that spells. Um, I, I think smart money's on the Steelers in this one. I like it. Next, we've got uh, a, a new rivalry brewing with the Packers and Bears now. Will it be the same old results there? Uh, Panthers, Falcons, a couple young quarterbacks facing off, and a whole lot more to finish up our Sunday six-pack next. Today's episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. And look, everyone's, you want the best candidates? All the candidates are on LinkedIn, right? I'm on LinkedIn, you're on LinkedIn, the the right hire for your business is also on LinkedIn. So all you do is you add the job to your purple hashtag hiring frame, lets everyone know that you are hiring on your LinkedIn profile. And then simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on nfl that's linkedin.com slash locked on nfl to post your job for free terms and conditions apply here we go packers at bears aaron Rodgers is over there in new york uh two young very talented quarterbacks in this football game is it now time for the chicago bears to buy that ownership stake back from the uh, Green Bay Packers that Aaron Rodgers uh, has possessed for all those years. How do you like this one? Green Bay at Chicago. Yeah, I picked Green Bay to win the division. I think they're the better team. I know they're the more talented defense. I think they'll be able to run on the Bears. And I've been saying for a while now that Pickett and Love are my two young quarterbacks that I'm most confident are going to be quality players. And that's not a knock on fields at all. He's really hard to play against. But the Packers have played against him before. And I think that goes a long way. It'll be a raucous environment. And Green Bay's really young. But I think they're the better team. I'll take the one point. As much work as the Chicago Bears have done on that roster, you know, it was a it was a gut job rebuild not that long ago. So top Mm -hmm. to bottom, the Green Bay Packers still have higher level talents, uh, higher draft picks all over the place, including on the defensive side of the ball. They're a little bit more prepared for what Justin Fields and what that offense is going to look like with Fields because, like you said, they've played against Justin Fields yeah. before. Um, and they're not prepared, though, for how much more talent is on the offensive side of the ball. Guys who can make plays without Justin Fields needing to be Superman and near needing to go hero ball to do everything for that offense. So, you know, quick game. Can Justin Fields get the ball out accurately on time to his receivers? Then I've got the Chicago Bears all day, and we'll find out a lot about what this team is going to look like and, and where Justin Fields is in his development now in, in year three. 
Bears favored by one point here. It's not enough to scare me off. I, I've got to stay on the Bears bandwagon, mm-hmm. and this might be the team that that dis, uh, disappoints me this year, and it could absolutely go bad for the Bears. But uh, I'm going to take the Chicago Bears, give up that one point at home against the new-look Packers. But, man, if Jordan Love, who he's kind of just been laying in the weeds for a while, we don't know what to expect there, there's some talent, um, much more of an unknown, and a, a lot of really young pass catchers as well. So I just think it's going to take some time for that Packers offense to gel. Give me the Chicago Bears. I think I have a feeling you feel a little differently on that one. Yeah, I like Green Bay in this game. I think they win, but a close one. And if you're going to give me a point, I'll take it. Uh, don't forget the Chicago Bears at home in week one last year. The Chicago Bears earned the first pick in the NFL draft. They beat the team that was in the NFC Championship game last <laughs> yeah. year in week one. So don't forget that one. Uh, it's going to be raucous. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Yeah. And just more, a lot more. I mean, everybody that I know is a Bears fan is excited right now. And I feel bad because that could crash and burn. You know, there's almost too much excitement. Yeah. That it's, it's not going to be that easy. It's not just, they're not just going to be good now, right? Yeah. Um, you can't find a quarterback in Chicago. It's not, it's not allowed. You know? <laughs> That's never happened, right? How about, speaking of young quarterbacks, the Panthers at the Falcons, the Atlanta Falcons favored by three and a half points at home against the upstart Panthers. We've got a whole new, uh, just a whole new ball game, basically in Carolina, which usually doesn't spell a lot of W's in the NFL as it pertains to, you know, a new quarterback and uh, a revamped offensive, really everything. Yeah, I. it sounds like Brian Burns is not going to be in this mix. He, he's holding out. I don't like the Panthers receivers. I think their O-lines played really poor. I think Young is going to struggle i don't think the falcons d is great but it's going to be loud and i think atlanta controls the football on the ground Bijan has a big day i i think atlanta is the noticeably better team but ritter could be bad i mean i'm not out of the woods at all on ritter seems like a big line three and a half right i'm still gonna take the home team The Burns thing really worries me because the one thing that you could count on in Carolina was Brian Burns, and he still hasn't gotten that deal done. And he hasn't, he's kind of been a sneaky holdout where this wasn't really expected. And then all of a sudden it's like, well, guys, we were supposed to get a deal done. And here we are without that deal. And we don't have it yet. So what are we even doing? And I wonder if there's a text thread with Chris Jones and Nick Bosa and Brian Burns, like there was with the running backs earlier on this, uh, this off season. And, and all these guys together are like, well, wait a second. Yeah, let's uh, let's get these deals done before we get on the field. We don't see players holding out anymore. And we don't see players missing game checks. So Weird. I have a feeling one of these three is going to sign before Sunday. Um, because, and Brian Burns is more prepared to go out and play a full. You know, so. He yeah. can sign Sunday morning and he's, you know, full go. Whereas it's different with, uh, with Jones and, and Bosa have been proper holdouts the whole time. Maybe they'd be more on a on a pitch count. They would definitely be on a pitch a, a pitch count most likely. Um, but yeah, the the just the rookie quarterback on the offense. At least Ritter's gone through those you know those rookie growing pains, and we I don't know if he's going to be good yet. But I got to take the Panthers. I think three and a half is not enough to scare me off of the Panthers or the uh, excuse me the Falcons at home. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take Atlanta. I, I think Bijan has a big game. Another divisional matchup here. We got the Seattle Seahawks hosting the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, the Rams, or no, the Seahawks at home, favored by five. These divisional games are tough because the coaches know each other so well and they've been preparing all summer. But man, I assume there's not going to be Cooper Cup. Um, I think Seattle's an improved team on both sides of the ball. I feel like I'm just taking favorites, but. I don't even care about the tough place to play things. The, the Rams have been there plenty, although 90% of their team hasn't because they're so new. Um, I'm going to take the Hawks and lay the points. I, I think the Rams might be the second worst team in the league. I like the home dogs in some of these situations, but mm-hmm. we've got the Seahawks at home. That's a tough place to play. Cooper Cup is not going to likely play right. in the football game either. Give me the Seahawks by a million. I mean, five, I kind of feel that way too. My point's not even close. This this should be Seahawks favored by eleven. I tend to think so too. Like one's a playoff team and one's you know fighting for the first overall pick. I totally agree there. So uh, yeah, give me Seahawks all day there. 
Uh, how about the Jaguars at the Colts? Speaking of divisional matchups here, Jacksonville favored by, I believe it is, is that five at home? I got five, yeah, last I saw. Who? I think the Jags front is decent. It's definitely very physical and should be able to handle the Colts running game to some degree. Um, I, I worry about the back end. It's in Indy. We talked yesterday about Lawrence. Is he ready to take a big step? I think the answer is yes. And I think the Jags are just on the field a lot and have a ton of weapons, whether it's ATN, Bigsby, Ingram, Kirk, you know, let alone Ridley. I don't know how the Colts defend all that. I'm going to take the favored here, Jacksonville. <laughs> Throw out everything I said about home dogs just in this specific game. Rookie quarterback, mm-hmm. the the path to victory with Jonathan Taylor and just running the heck out of the ball and keeping the game short and keeping the game close. I don't think the Colts are even prepared to do that right now. Um, no. You know, familiar opponents, Jaguars. I know they're going on the road here to start, but five points again, very much like that Seahawks Rams game. It's just not enough to scare me off this one. Give me the Jaguars on the road by a touchdown. Me too. Me too. Final game here in our Sunday six-pack, and we'll make picks on the rest of the week one slate on Friday's episode, as well as uh, reacting to what we see on Thursday night kickoff, Lions at Chiefs. How about the Car- uh, the Arizona Cardinals are at the Commanders, and this is one of the biggest lines of the weekend, the Commanders favored by seven. So this, is, this line makes more sense. I feel like the last two games we talked about, the line should be more like a touchdown, like this one is Commanders favored by seven at home against the Cards. Yeah, cross-country road trip, 1 o'clock start for a rookie head coach, and who's the quarterback? I mean, there's nothing good you can say about Arizona. It's more just, is the line too much? I mean, and I think seven's not enough. I mean, I think Washington will run all over these guys. If you play DFS, I bet you can get Jahan Dotson pretty cheap. I think he tortures them. And I don't know how they block Payne and Allen and Young and all those guys, too. So, I guess there's... I read the other day, you know, Washington selling tickets like crazy, you know, ding dong, the the witch is dead. And by that, I mean, Daniel Snyder, you know, so I think that you'll see pig noses in the stands again and, you know, a, a different environment than we've seen in the Washington stadium. I think they win this one pretty big too. The hogs are back. I, I didn't really think <laughs> about that extra bit of, yeah, no Dan Snyder. It's going to be a right. problem. That's always a, a really, that's, that's a really good fan base. Uh, um, I hope it's a, back. Yeah, in a place that is that is raucous anyway. So, yeah, I mean, a touchdown. Uh, there's no I way I, I would bet on the uh, on the Cardinals to even be within a touchdown in this game. And I know it's Week One; things can get weird. But cross country trip, everything like uh, even like Terry McLaurin's got turf toe. Okay, sit him down an extra week. Let's <laughs> let's get him back in Week Two. Run the heck out of the football here. We've got a better football team. Let's lean on them. Yeah, again, this is another one. Give me Washington by a million. Uh, probably a game I wouldn't start to bet on if it got over seven points. But, yeah, uh, th- yeah. there's almost no number that would scare me off of this one with with how me, bad me they are, are to start the year. And a quarterback, new head coach that I don't know if I have a ton of confidence anyway. So, yeah, could be some blowouts brewing in week one, Matt. Could be, and spe- especially the games we talked about today. I mean, tomorrow's I think are going to be a lot, lot more – Dig into, you know, I mean, a lot closer, better battles, but I don't know that Arizona wants to win. And of course, there's still time. Let us know at BD Peacock, at Williamson NFL, or in the YouTube comments what you think our bet should be between Matt and myself with, uh, with Purdy and Pickett, 49ers at Steelers. We'll be back Friday to break down all of the rest of week one. Talk to you then right here, Peacock and Williamson.